Welcome to the He's Got Issues Independent Comics Edition number 167.3. I'm John Cooney here to preview new independent comics being released April 1st, 2015, beginning alphabetically with Boom Studios and Adventure Time Volume 5 Grable Schmabel's graphic novel. Finn and Jake are about to go on their craziest series of adventures yet, and they don't even have to leave their living room? After helping Party God with his technical issues, these two best pals discover a tiny cube all by its lonesome in the middle of the woods. Not once to leave the helpless so helpless, Finn and Jake take their new friend back to the treehouse and discover that some of the most harmless looking things can be the most dangerous. Next we have cluster number three. Valuable time is slipping away as Samara, Grace, and the other dropship crash survivors make their way through the alien-filled Maryland market and come face to face with enemies of the prison from Harlan's Pass. Every second they waste puts them in danger of being punched out. We've also got Feathers number four of six. Good friends are hard to come by in the maze. Poe and Bianca will have to stick together and outsmart the guard if they want to reach the white guide, but a new revelation gives them hope to bolster their cause. Next we have Garfield number 36. In the final issue of Garfield, His Nine Lives, Fraser Irving brings us the scary story of Lab Cat, and Garfield veteran Genevieve F.T. takes Garfield into the future with Space Cat. We've also got Halogen number two of four. While attending a concert, Rel is given information on where to find a piece of the god. It's a race off planet to find the first piece before the other companies, but all is not what it seems as an unexpected attack comes from a mysterious origin. Next we have Palmiotti and Brady's The Big Con Job number two of four. While Blaze, Poach, Colin, and Hendrix debate whether robbing the con is worth the risk, we meet two new disgruntled former stars. Madeline Maddie Cannon shares her trailer with a dog on the set of a horrible sci-fi movie, and Johnny Laozing Lee of TV's Lotus Wind series sits as an advisor for the remake while haughty actor Billy Benton whitewashes his film. We've also got UFOlogy number one of six. Becky Finch never wanted to be special. She just wanted to be a normal high school student in the small midwestern town of Macaugui. Malcolm Chamber wanted something more, a destiny, an answer from the stars. When Becky is marked by an alien's touch, she'll stumble into a mystery she never wanted, a mystery that almost ripped apart their parents' lives 12 years ago. She'll need the help of her eccentric young classmate Malcolm as she finds the power within herself to uncover the truth. And we've got The Woods number 12. Adrian has seen what the future can be. Now that the Black Stone is within his grasp, he wants to do whatever it takes for that future to come true. Tsunami, Calder, and the Hunters have problems of their own as they deal with the chaos of the school. From Dark Horse Comics, we've got Angel and Faith Season 10, number 13. Angel and Faith join forces in an attempt to save Fred and keep the powerful goddess Elyra from taking over. Without Elyra present, the honor-bound demon Ko may never discover who slayed his family and imprison him, a devastating reality for this unlikely hero. Next we have Hellboy in the BPRD 1952 number 5 of 5. Hellboy discovers the terrible truth of the Portuguese fortress, the murders in the village, and the man behind it all. But will he be able to save his fellow agents from the monsters and madmen? We've also got Lady Killer number four or five. Josie is a happily dedicated housewife and mother in 1960s suburban Seattle, but she's keeping a secret from her family. She's also a contract killer with nerves of steel. But when the tables turn and she finds herself with the target on her own back, she looks for answers from another mysterious deadly woman. Next, we have Never Boy number two of six. Artists thrive on inspiration, but what happens when it dries up? Julian Drag, a former artist turned cab driver, has lost his muse and hasn't created anything but depression in years. Just when he's ready to throw in the towel, a desperate Neverboy comes crashing into his life. The two lost souls realize they may be able to help each other, but at what cost? We've also got Rack God number three of five. Eisner Award Hall of Fame inductee Richard Corbin's new original horror tale is inspired by the works of H.P. Lovecraft and Native American mythology. Elwood travels further into his waking nightmare in the backwoods town of Lame Dog and the terrifying secrets that lurk in its cemetery. Next we have Robert E. Howard's Savage Sword number 10. This issue is packed from cover to cover with stories by some of comics' greatest creators. Ron Mars teams up with Richard Clark to tell a thrilling tale of human sacrifice and swift justice starring Solomon Kane. Alex DeCampi and Mark Lamming adapt Howard's famed fable The Dark Man, and John Ostrander pens a brand new story starring the Sumerian swordsman Conan. Plus, we reprint the timeless cult tale Demon in a Silvered Glass by Doug Munch and John Bolton. 
And we've got Witcher, Fox Children, number one of five. Geralt's journey leads him aboard a ship of fools, renegades, and criminals, but some passengers are more dangerous than others, and one hides a hideous secret. From Dynamite Entertainment, we've got Army of Darkness, volume four, number five of five, the final issue of the Ash in Space saga. Next, we have Battlestar Galactica, Death of Apollo, number five of six. The crew of the Galactica and the fleet as a whole comes to terms with Apollo's shocking fate. But there's no time for reflection. Apollo's mission woke up the Cylon threat, and the old enemy has become aware of the fleet again. The war is turned hot again, the fleet is in grave danger, and without Apollo's pilot skills and leadership, the human race may not survive. Epic, continuity-shaking storytelling from cosmic fan-favorite writer Dan Abnett and out-of-this-world artist Dietrich Smith. We've also got Blood Queen vs. Dracula number 204. The epic meeting between the Prince of Darkness and the Blood Queen continues. When Dracula and Elizabeth come face to face, sparks and quite possibly blood will fly. With their common enemy rising from the Ottoman Empire, will they put aside their differences to fight back or will they be consumed by their own war? It's two classic characters in one bold new series from Dynamite. Next, we have Legendary Green Hornet number 205. The big city gang war heats up and there's a bounty on the Green Hornet's head. The Hornet and Kato start their hunt for the secret architect of the war, which leads them to the headquarters of the strangest cult in the city, the Clockwork Cathedral. When the great and powerful TikTok acts for donations, they will be collected. We've also got Looking for Group number 1. Looking for Group is a hilarious ride through fantasy and adventure tropes set in a reality and time unlike our own, a place where the eating of small children is not necessarily frowned upon, where beings of extraordinary power can destroy entire villages with only because I could as an excuse, where magic and adventure are as commonplace as setting fire to then reanimating a chipmunk into the skeletal minion, it happens more than you'd think, and an epic journey can begin by an accident of fate. With a brand new cover by industry veteran Ty Templeton and bonus stories from the non-playable character and Tiny Dick Adventure spin-offs, see what millions have been talking about online as this long-running webcomic comes to print in monthly comic book format. Next, we have Mercy Thompson, number six of six. Mercy Thompson's all-new comic book adventure comes to its tense conclusion in a story by New York Times best-selling author Patricia Briggs. Mercy has discovered a fake connection to the buried bodies, but can that knowledge help save her stepdaughter Jessie before she becomes Hopcross Jilly's next victim? We've also got Pathfinder Origins number 3 of 6. When Mysteries and Sioni the Sorcerer's Past lead her to the renowned Jagari Museum, she finds its newest acquisition targeted by deadly thieves. Joining with the mercenary Magus Satil, her plan to capture the criminals unmasks their underhanded leader, but also a menace from an age of forgotten evil. A tale of magic and ancient secrets from Pathfinder editor-in-chief F. Wesley Schneider, with art by Tom Garcia. Contains pull-out poster map and official Pathfinder RPG bonus encounter. Next, we have Project Superpowers Black Cross number 2 of 6. In the quiet Pacific Northwestern town of Black Cross, something terrible is happening. A man has burned himself to death by the lake, but there's no body. A man under witness protection is under threat. A serial killer is murdering his way towards the town limits, and supernatural figures stare out through mirrors and windows, haunting their own doppelgangers. The alternative history of Black Cross is reaching out through the mist to lay its claws on the real world. And we've got Uncanny Season 2, number 1 of 6. Weaver is a man on the run. Gifted with the uncanny ability to steal knowledge and skills from other people, he found himself used as bait in a high-stakes game of cat and mouse. Now it's time for Weaver to turn the tables on the shadowy organization known as Cadre as he begins his quest to find the source of his own powers. From IDW Publishing, we've got Creature Cop Special Varmint Unit, number 3 of 3. Animal Cop Kaminsky and his misfit crew expect to deal with panda dogs and horned mastiffs, but Cthulhu creatures were not in the job description. From rampaging griffins to insane death cults, it's all been building to this final showdown. But don't worry, Kaminsky brought his catch pole and is ready to kick some monster ass. Next we have G.I. Joe number 7, The Fall of G.I. Joe. Entrenched in a war-torn Eastern European nation, the G.I. Joe team collides with separatists, ex-teammates, locals, and Cobra. Politics collide with boots on the ground in one of the most unforgettable G.I. Joe epics of all time. We've also got G.I. Joe, a real American hero, number 212. G.I. Joe faces a force unlike anything they've ever encountered before, and the only way to control it is by reviving Serpentor, the Cobra Emperor himself. 
but bringing him back sets into motion drastic events that lead to the death of the original Ninja Commando. The death of Snake Eyes begins here in G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero, number 212. Next, we have Galaxy Quest, The Journey Continues, number 3 of 4. The cast of Galaxy Quest have landed on the planet Drith, charged by an ancient alien rebel with fixing a mistake they didn't even know they made by meddling in the politics of another planet, but first they have to get through an alien wasteland in one piece. Meanwhile, back on Earth, Guy is stuck in a comic convention with a group of aliens masquerading as his co-stars. Nothing could go wrong there, right? We've also got Max Maximize, number 17. While Julie's stuck in the bathroom thanks to her morning sickness, Sarah and Max's minds become melded, and Max now knows what he must do. He journeys to Julia's outback, where amid a sea of skulls, he finds the Leopard Queen. Together, they travel to a distant volcano, and while staring into the flaring lava, Max's memories come flooding back to him. Next, we have Millennium number 3 of 5. Fifteen years ago, the end of the world, the anticipated Millennium event, was avoided thanks to the efforts of Frank Black and FBI agents Fox Mulder and Dana Scully. Or was it? Frank's psychic gifts have been showing him that evil has continued to grow unabated in the world, and he's trying his best to ignore it. But soon the resurgence of the Millennium Group and their quest to find Frank's daughter, Jordan, will pull him into the fray once again, whether he likes it or not. We've also got My Little Pony Fiendship is Magic number 1 of 5, the first My Little Pony miniseries event. This month-long weekly limited series explores the secret origins of Equestria's greatest villain, what caused Sombra to become one of the most feared ponies in Equestria's history. Next, we've got Robert Henline, Citizen of the Galaxy number 2 of 3. Just outside our galaxy, the atrocities of slavery thrive, and young Thorby is just another orphaned boy sold at auction. But when he crosses paths with the mysterious crippled beggar, his destiny is forever changed. And now as his knowledge and skills mature, Thorby becomes increasingly aware of how his ever-changing fortunes could affect the destinies of us all. Citizen of the Galaxy is an interstellar action-adventure coming-of-age tale by the Dean of Science Fiction, Robert A. Heinlein. We've also got Shadow Show number 5 of 5. In Shadow Show, acclaimed writers and artists come together to pay tribute to the work of the one and only Ray Bradbury. The final story in the series is Conjure, written by Alice Hoffman with art by Chris Evanhouse. It's summertime in a small American town, and rumor has it an angel has come to town. Two friends, Kate and Abby, discover the truth, but there's a price to be paid for their curiosity. Next, we have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Color Classics Volume 3, Number 3. The TMNT Color Classics line continues, presenting another classic Mirage storyline in all new full color. In City at War, Part 1, a terrorist bomb sets off an explosive chain of events across New York City, igniting a dangerous power struggle of epic proportions. But with the Turtles and their family and friends in utter disarray, is there any hope for the Big Apple? Originally printed in black and white as TMNT Volume 1, Number 50. We've also got Weird Love Number 6, our brand spanking new issue of everybody's favorite love to hate, or is that hate to love, comic, the lured, the lusty, the loony, Weird Love. Along with much more, this issue has the most jaw-dropping, hilarious, bizarro story we've ever dared to print, I Married a Monster, about a girl's crush who is a head-to-toe, hairy, big-footed loon who goes around howling, Aroo! If she likes him, there's hope for us all. And we've got X-Files Season 10, Number 22, Elders, Part 2 of 5. The syndicate that long bedeviled Agents Mulder and Scully has returned with old faces and a new leader. For what new secrets will they fight and kill? And what will become of X-Files once those secrets are laid bare? The end is here. From Image Comics, we've got Black Science, Number 13. The Dimension Knots take on a new mission, leave every world they visit behind better than when they found it. But their metal is put to the test in a plague-ridden society that wants to burn them all at the stake. Next, we have Dead at 17, The Blasphemy Throne, Number 7 of 7. The final issue, this is it, with the seventh issue of the seventh series, Dead at 17 reaches its grand conclusion. Every fight, every battle, every life, every death, every blood-soaked moment has been leading to this one unforgettable ending. We've also got Dying in the Dead number 2, the oldest generation. Faced with an impossible task, the colonel assembles the remnants of his World War II team for one final mission and one last ride into the glorious sunset. Next, we have Egos number 7. As Crunched continues, the Egos' investigation of the galactic conspiracy leads them to a paranoid schizophrenic and a drunken cyborg, plus Deuce, leader of the Egos, actually talks to his wife. We've also got God Hates Astronauts number 7. 
What are we going to do without Stargrass? It's about time someone did something to fix that problem. Next, we have Graveyard Shift number 44, miniseries conclusion. Liam and Hope launch an assault on Cromier's lair, hoping to defeat the vampire overlord and find a cure for Hope's condition. We've also got Ninth Generation number 3, The Darkness Returns. Next, we have Little Depressed Boy supposed to be there too, number 4, It's Not My Birthday. Surprises abound as Little Depressed Boy meets Spike's friends and family. We've also got Nailbiter number 11, New Story Arc. Does the Nailbiter know why 16 of the world's worst serial killers all came from the same small town? Does he know the truth? Find out as the Nailbiter confesses. Next, we have No Mercy number one. It was just a trip before college. Build schools in a Central American village, get to know some of the other freshmen. But after tragedy strikes, a handful of once privileged U.S. teens must find their way home in a cruel landscape that at best doesn't like them and at worst actively wants to kill them. We've also got Penny Dora and the Wishing Box number four or five. On the third day of Christmas, Penny Dora found herself face to face with a horde of fire breathing dragons, oodles of monsters, and at least seven dwarves. All thanks to the girl she used to call best friend, now known as Princess Elizabeth, who ruled over all the lands with her all-powerful wishing box. Next, we have Southern Bastards number 8, the final chapter in the story of how the worst football player in Croc County rose to become Coach Boss and the terrible bloody price he had to pay along the way. Don't miss the chilling conclusion of Gridiron, the second arc in the seminal Southern crime series. We've also got Tales from the Con Year 2. If you've been to a comic convention, you'll recognize the scenes in Tales from the Con, the irreverent webcomic that has appeared on the Emerald City Comic Con website since 2012. Written by Eisner nominee Brad Geiger and illustrated by Chris Russo, Tales from the Con is an uproarious take on the world of comic books and conventions. Fanboys, fangirls, cosplayers, retailers, volunteers, and pros repeatedly collide on the convention floor and beyond to prove that comic conventions are one part festival, two parts group therapy. Collects the second year of Tales from the Con strips along with bonus material. And we've got Tech Jacket number 9. In order for the entire freaking galaxy to survive, Tech Jacket must join forces with his greatest enemies, which, face it, is no fun to do. But neither is the destruction of everyone and everything he holds dear, so... From Valiant Entertainment, we've got Exo Man of War number 35. Dead hand means death. In the far reaches of deep space, the ultimate failsafe of an extinct alien race is finally counted down to zero, and the robot army called Dead Hand has been activated. The civilization that built them has fallen, and now to combat the doomsday threat that destroyed their world, Dead Hand will complete the mission that their creators could not. Soulless and brutal, this billion-strong legion is a phantom army of a dead world, and it will cleanse the universe by any means necessary. But what unthinkable menace were they created to destroy, and will Dead Hand's slow march across the galaxy spell death for countless worlds? Soon, Eric of Dacia will be forced to confront the secrets that have pushed him to this terrible turning point that is Dead Hand, and battle a single-minded killing machine unlike any has seen before. Outmatched and vastly outnumbered, how can Eric stop something unstoppable, something that knows no fear, only eradication? Okay, so that's a look at some of the top independent publishers this week, but there's still plenty of other books out as well, so be sure to check out my YouTube channel at he'sgotissues.com to see both the Marvel and DC videos for this week, as well as my usual roundup of all my favorites for the week with a little more depth and insight than you get here. And if you like these videos, be sure to let me know by leaving a comment and subscribing. You can also follow He's Got Issues on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Tumblr, and Instagram to see everything I'm reading as I read it. So until next week, I'm John Cooney, and I've got issues.